Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble your toolie. Toolie ships as a partially assembled kit, so when it arrives, you'll need to assemble it before you can use it. To assemble it, we only need some very basic tools. These include a set of hex keys, which arrive with toolie, a pair of pliers, a tape measure, a small Phillips screwdriver, and four blocks of wood. Now, it doesn't have to be four blocks of wood, it can be four hardcover books, for example, as long as they're all the same thickness. Now we'll move on to assemble the first part of Tooley, which is the frame assembly. Right, to assemble the frame, we're going to need the main frame components. These comprise of two side beams. These are recognisable by they have a one red stripe on them, and all the other slots are open. So there's two of those. There's also a front assembly. You recognize this as it has um, obviously the red stripe, but it also has little bearings in the corner sections, little pulleys with bearings in them. The other section is the rear section, so this is where the motor mounts, so the motors will mount into here, the drive motors, and it also has um, some components on the back for solenoids and control boxes. The other main component is the gantry. So this is what runs back and forth along the uh, Y beams and it has the head that rides back and forth along that which the head's attached to. You're also going to need the mid-size hex key which is a 2.5mm and you're also going to need the M5 by 8mm cone grub screws. So these are what we're going to use to join these together. Right, first off, first thing we need to do is we'll grab the front section here, we'll sit it on its end so it's facing upwards, and then we can stand the beams on it. Now these Y beams, the red beam faces out away from the frame, so this one will go on this side, and it does it by just simply sliding down over the two brackets. Again, the red to the outside, sliding it down over the brackets. Right, now that we've got the uh, sides on, we're going to have to use the uh, M5 by 8mm cone point grub screws. These are what we use to hold the frame system together in the corners. So all we're going to do for now is we're going to put uh, a screw in each corner. We're going to put it in the topmost hole here and not the bottom hole, so the topmost hole, or the outermost hole. So we're just going to screw this in. I'm going to nip it up a little bit there. I'm just going to make sure that that's pushed down and flush with the outer edge of the steel corner bracket. And then we're just going to nip that up. And come across, and we'll do the same on the other side. I'm going to put that into the screw hole. Again, it's just the top one, or the outermost from the corner. And we'll just tighten that up. It should be approximately flush with the steel corner bracket. So now that we've done that, we're going to turn it around. We'll just lie it down the fat. And we're going to do the same on the two back corners here. So just take another grub screw, outermost hole. Nip it up. And just give it a little tighten. And the same on the other side. Okay, so we should have two empty threads on the bottom here. And two empty threads the bottom there. Now that we've got the frame sides on, it's time to put the gantry on. To do this we need to do a bit of prep work. I'm just going to put the frame aside for now. Right, with the gantry, you see the gantry here, it's got uh, what we call Y carriages, one on each end of the gantry, and it's got an X carriage which moves back and forth along the, along the gantry. What we need to do first is we need to loosen off 
the uh, bolts that are holding the uh, Y carriages on just so it can freely move as we slide the gantry on. To do that we just need to loosen two bolts on each end, one on the top side, one on the underside. So I'll just go ahead and loosen those now. Careful, it does roll away. Okay, so we only need to do half a turn on each bolt in an anti-clockwise direction. And this is just to help uh, the little trucks or the, the carriages move slightly as they need to as we slide the gantry onto the onto the frame. Okay. Right, now just be a little bit careful because they are not loose on there now. If you tilt it one way or the other, they may slide off. I'm just going to put that back over here for now. Right, we're going to bring the frame back into play, but now we're going to put it on one of those wooden blocks or whatever you have sorted out for that. Um, just to help us put the gantry on because the gantry doesn't sit flush with the rest of the flame, frame, so it can't sit flat on the table. So we'll slide this over here. Now one of the things we have to do is we have to put the gantry, uh, the frame sorry, in the upright position so it's facing up as it will be used in, in the end. Now we can tell which way is up by this face here. There was a, um, a, pla a black plastic strip filling up the T-slot. So that's going to go to the top side. The underside uh, does not have that so it will be open on the other side. Right, so we're just going to lay that down and sit those on the blocks get it up off the surface. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to do, figure out which side is up and forward of the gantry so we put it on the correct way. Uh, we can do this simply by looking at the X carriage. The up position is going to be the, uh, the wheels that have the black axles as opposed to the wheels that have the stainless steel axles or the nuts if you like for adjusting tension. So the black axles are going to go facing up now to get the direction around the right way, we want the flattest side of the carriage plate to be facing forward. The back side has some M5 nuts on it which obviously make it very lumpy and we can't mount our tool plates onto there. So we're going to spin it so the black axles are facing out and the smooth side is facing forward to the front beam. Now what we're going to do is just going to gently slide it so the wheels go over the, the extrusion, the side beams and they fit into the V slots on the extrusion. I'm just going to slide that on and then we're just going to slide it past the blocks so that it can sit flat. It's flat. So the frame's nice and flat again uh, and the gantry is free to move in and out. Right, now that we've done that we're going to stick the rear section of the frame on. That's this section here. So we also need to decide or decipher which way this goes as well. So Again, the red always goes to the outside, so that's going to be obvious. And what goes up is the same what went up on the front beam, and that's the fully enclosed uh, T-slot with a black plastic strip. Now on the back section, there's also the underside is partially closed, but it's also got um, a gap in the middle for a, a nuts for mounting the control box, and it's also got the um, center mark on there as well. So we want to flip it up the other way, so the black infill is facing up again. Now simply as what we did last time is we just need to slide this with the steel corner brackets into the T-slot extrusion, into the Y-beams, slide it on like such. Right, and that's our complete frame. What we need to do now is put uh, some more M5 grub screws into this corner, and that's stage one over and done with. So to do that we'll just grab our screws. So again, grub screws just in the outermost hole, or the hole furthest away from the corner, on both ends on both sides. So we're just going to tighten that up as we push it in, just making sure it's nice and flush on the sides, and hard up against the steel bracket. So we can just give that a little tweak. Come across and do the same on the other side. Again, we just need to make sure it's pushed in nice up snug against the aluminium. And we're just going to tighten that up. Like so. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over and just do the other side. 
we need to be careful is when we tip it up things are going to roll so what I like to do is push that to that side so it doesn't slide and roll and crash and we'll roll it over make sure the blocks are still under there holding it nice and flat and we'll put some grub screws into the other side again it's just the outermost hole ones first and just tighten those up so again not to over tighten we just want to tighten them enough enough so they grab them and so they're properly approximately flush with the top of the steel corner bracket okay, same on this side just tighten that up right now the next thing we want to do is we want to check the squareness of the frame so we're just going to check it square before we put the final four grub screws in the bottom that's the extra two on each end so to do that what we do is we grab a tape measure and we're going to measure the diagonals and see if they're the same they need to if they're the same if exactly the same the frame must be square so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook that on this corner end like that and I'm going to measure to a point over here that says 743 and I'm going to measure the opposite over here to the same corners at the same point and it says 741 so it's a little bit out of square so what I'm going to do this is the long edge that's the short edge so I'm just going to tap the long edge together a little which will just shorten it up a bit 742 742 okay so that's now that's nice and square we're just going to put these last four grub screws in so those are the two holes closest to the corner in both cases so we just pop those in tighten them up now the holes on the other side on the top side that don't have grub screws in it yet we don't actually put grub screws in those um, those holes are to hold the top covers on so we leave those empty for now the other side ones will fill up okay and the last one here What I like to do now that we've got all the grub screws in, I just like to quickly go around and just check that they're all tight. So we'll just quickly do that. You can even check the ones that were in place originally when Tully arrived at your house. Okay, so now we've done that, we'll flip Tully over again, again being careful not to let the carriages bang around. Okay, so again we're up this way. What I think we'll do now is we'll just quickly check those top grub screws to make sure they're nice and snug. There we have it, that's a basic frame assembly done. Now we'll move on to uh, installing the, the uh, drive belts and the drive motors. By manipulating the motors and direction, you can control the forward and back motion of the gantry and the left to right of the X carriage. There are two drive belts, one on each motor. One starts on one side of the X carriage and it moves through a series of pulleys around the outside of the frame then back to the gantry and back to the adjacent side of the X carriage same again on the opposite side it goes the other direction around here back down to where the drive motor will be mounted back up to the gantry and across to the back again now these belts are on two different planes which allows them to pass over the top of each other which they do so inside the T-slot on the front of the, gantry, uh, front of the frame there 
So to begin, what we need to do first is we'll mount the stepper motors, the drive motors, into the frame and then we'll allow us to um, feed the belt through the system. If you look at the two drive motors, you'll notice the pulley is mounted different from one to the other. On one of them, the teeth of the pulley are mounted to the top or the end of the shaft. The other, the teeth are mounted towards the motor or the bottom of the shaft. The motor that has a pulley with the teeth to the top of the shaft is the left hand motor. The one that has the teeth to the bottom of the shaft or near the motor is the right hand motor. Okay, so I'm going to put the left hand motor in first. Just lift up the frame, drop that over. Now one side of the stepper motor has got a connector on it, which you can see here. We want the connector facing along the back frame, the back of the frame. So pointing inwards facing along the back of the frame. Now I'm just going to drop in the M3 by 6mm screws. Basically just drop them in to the slot there. Then I'm going to insert the um, the hex key through the slot in the top plate and we're just going to loosely just tighten those up just to, not so they're not tight they're just nipped up we'll put the other three bolts in using the same procedure so we're not going to tighten the bolts up yet we'll just put them all in to start with The slots are there so we can put a bit of tension on the belts once they're in. So once you've got the four screws in, just push it, push the motor all the way to the front of the machine. So that's along this direction, push it to the front and just tighten up the bolts so that the motor holds position. Okay, once we've done that, we're gonna flip over and do the same to the right hand motor. Okay, so now the same on the right hand side of the frame, we're going to put the right hand motor in, lift it up, drop it under, and again we'll just insert the bolts the same as we did on the last motor. Once we've done this we'll be ready to start running the belts. We need to slide the motor forward before we tighten up the screws. And you'll also notice that the connection is facing along the back of the frame as with the other motor. Now that we've got the motors installed, it's time to install the drive belts. The two drive belts, each has a crimped end. You'll see one's got, one end's got a crimp with a loop on it, the other end doesn't. So first off we're going to attach the crimped end to the front of the X carriage. Alright, so first off we're going to take one of the belts with the teeth facing out, away from the gantry, in front of the gantry. And then we're going to take one of these dowel pins and we're going to insert it into the loop of the belt like this. Then that belt and thing simply clip into the slot there and that'll sit in there like that. Next we're going to take the other belt which is identical to the first belt and we're going to do the same thing. So we'll grab a dowel pin We'll insert it into the loop and then we're going to clip that into the front plate of the X carriage. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to ins install the, the attachment side plate, slide plate onto the front of the X carriage there to stop those belts falling out. So this is the, the slide plate here. To attach it we need four 
M4 by 12 countersunk screws. So one, two, three, four. We'll also use the two and a half mil hex key to insert them. So we'll simply lift that up, line up the holes, and we'll insert the screws. Just do them loosely to start with until you get all screws in. So these will stop the belts falling out as we feed them around the frame. So once you've got those in you can give them a tighten up. Right, now that we've got that first step done, we can feed the bell around the rest of the frame. Now we're going to feed the left hand bell through the left hand gantry pulley through here. To help us feed the belt through the pulley, I'm going to use this piece of card, which is about 19 mils or 3 quarter inch wide. I'm just going to curl the end of it by running it across the scissors. Then I'm going to feed this around the pulley and this will enable the belt to follow the same path. And make it easier to get the, the belt through the pulley. So one of the things we need to do when we're feeding the belt is we need to make sure we keep it facing the same way all the, all the way. So with the teeth facing to the front, I'm now going to feed the belt through the pulley and by through the pulley I mean between the two flanges of the pulley. So not above it on the shaft but actually between the two flanges. So I'm just going to slide that through. Because we've got the card there it slides through nice and easy. And then I'm just going to pull it all the way through. Just to make sure it's got no twists in the belt. Right, so that's good. You can see the belt with the teeth facing forward as it goes around the pulley between the two flanges of the pulley and out the other side. So we can now remove the piece of cardboard. Now we'll move on to the front end pulley. We've just fed the first belt through the gantry pulley. Now we'll feed it through the front end pulley. You'll notice at the front end that there are two pulleys. As we're currently working on the low plane pulley system, we'll go through the low pulley. Making sure that the belt is not twisted, we're going to feed it through between the two pulleys, between the two flanges on the low pulley. So once we got that through, we can actually feed it back again so that we're going around the pulley. Check that we're between the two flanges and then carefully pull the belt through. The teeth should be against the pulley. So once you've done that, check to make sure there's no twists in the belt. Now we're going to feed the belt through the T-slot of the front beam over to the other side where we'll connect through the next pulley. Now that we've thread the belt through the, the front beam on the inside slot, we're going to feed it through the next pulley. So again we're aiming for the low pulley because we're doing the low set belt. I'm just going to pull it all the way through first, again making sure it's not twisted. Once we're all the way through, I'm going to go around the outside of the lower pulley and back and through to the inside of the frame. 
again making sure it's not twisted and that it's seated between the, the two flanges on the, on the lower pulley. From here we'll be able to feed it down through the side beam down to the back of the motor. Down through here. Now that we've run the belt from the X carriage along through the gantry pulley and through the two front pulleys, we now feed it behind the gantry in the T-slot opening on the side beam there. So we can simply do this just by poking it through like that. Again we're making sure that the belt is all running the same way and not twisted. And then we're going to feed it down past the stepper motor pulley. And we just pop it and make sure it's inside. Now we're going to feed the belt around the motor pulley. At this point your teeth should be facing towards the pulley so they engage with the teeth on the pulley. Go around like this. So make sure that the teeth are engaged between the belt and the pulley and then we'll head on back up to the gantry again. Now we're on the back of the gantry and we need to pass the, the belt through the back gantry pulley like through here. Again we're going to use our piece of cardboard, just going to feed that through like so. And then this will allow us to feed the belt around the pulley like so, making sure that the belt again is not twisted and that the belt passes between the flanges of the pulley. Right, once we've got that we can just leave that to sit there and we'll go ahead and we'll do the other belt. The belt we've just installed tracks around here, along the frame, down through here, back and finishes behind the, the gantry carriage. The second belt we're about to install is going to run around the opposite direction and also end up behind the gantry carriage. It's also going to run on the upper plane, so we'll be using the bearings that are at the top rather than the bearings at the bottom. As we did with the first belt, we need to run the second belt through this pulley on the gantry and off up to the front pulley. So what we'll do is we'll insert the piece of card as we have previously done this just helps pass the belt through the pulley. Right, again making sure that the belt isn't twisted and that the teeth are facing towards the front of the machine. We'll feed this through. Again making sure we're going between the flanges of the pulley. Once we've got that started we can simply pull that through. If it doesn't get all tangled and twisted, move a bit of card, and there we have it. Right, now we'll move on up to the front pulley as we did with the first belt. Now we're going to feed the pulley, the belt through the front pulley. This time we'll be going between the pulleys and we'll be aiming for the high pulley. So just make sure we pass it through there between the two pulley axles and it's between the flanges of the top pulley. Poke it back through there, pull it out. Again making sure that the belt isn't twisted and that the belt passes between the flanges of the pulley. Now we can feed it through the front over to the other front pulley. Now we're over the other front corner and we're going to feed the belt through, remembering that we're going for the high pulley this time. So I'm just going to feed that through behind both axles, both pulleys, making sure the belt's not twisted, and then we'll just poke the belt into the channel there. Then we'll feed it back around the top pulley, 
bring it back out into the center again. Making sure it goes between the flanges of the pulley. Now we can head on down to the back pulley on the motor. On the way down to the back motor we need to feed the belt behind the Y carriage on the gantry. So we can simply do that by sliding it in the channel and sliding it on past all the way down to the motor. Again making sure the belt isn't twisted. If it is, like I've got it slightly twisted here, you can just twist it and it should come undone. Okay, so it fits nicely in there, and if you can see in there, the teeth are all facing out, which they should be. Back up to the gantry with the belt, we want to feed it around the pulley on the motor, and we want to make sure the teeth engage with the teeth on the pulley. Once we've done that, then we'll head on back up to the final pulley on the gantry. We're now on to the last pulley. I'm going to feed it through the pulley and over to the back of the X carriage. So again, I'm going to use a piece of card, insert it in behind the pulley, and then follow it with the belt. Again, making sure the belt's not twisted, and that it passes between the flanges of the pulley. And there we have it. Next we'll be moving on to attaching both belts to the back of the carriage. Belts. First we're going to have to fold and crimp the ends of the belts like you would have seen when we first installed the belts on the other end. To do this we're going to need the two aluminium crimps, a pair of pliers and we'll also need the two roll pins to insert the belts into the back of the carriage. If we look on this toothed side of each belt you'll see a silver line marked on the top of one of the teeth. This is a point that we're going to fold the belt over to. So we're just going to take the belt and we're going to fold it over until the end of the belt touches the line that was marked on the teeth and also so that the teeth engage. Before we do that, what first we're going to do is we're going to slide one of the crimps on. Now the crimp is a, a almost oval strip of aluminium that'll have a slight gap on one side. So we want that gap to be facing up and we want the teeth on the belt to be facing up. And we're going to slide that on and we're going to slide it just past the silver line. So now that we fold the belt over till it just touches the silver line, then we can slide the crimp back over both layers of the belt, like so. So we need to check that the belt finishes just before the silver line, which it does. Now before we close the crimp, what we're going to do is we're going to slide one of the dowels in there, like so. Then we're going to slide the crimp up nice and close to it. When it's like that, I'm going to grab the pliers and we're just simply going to squeeze it together. So give it a good hard squeeze. Now sometimes the crimp might open up a little bit, so what you can do is you can also just squeeze it back the other way to close that gap up. And then I like to just give it one last final squeeze in that direction. And that's done. So now we can do the same to the other bell. So again, we're going to slide on the crimp just past the silver line. Then we're going to fold the belt over until the end of it reaches the silver line, but you can still see the silver line. Then we'll slide the crimp back over both layers. Once we've done that, we'll insert the dowel pin. We'll then slide the crimp up nice and snug the dowel pin and then we use our pliers to crush the crimp. So again I crushed it in one direction and just close the opening and then just give it a final crimp. 
So there we go, nice and tight. So now that we've got that, we can simply just pop them into the cutout as we did at the beginning of the belts. One on that side and one on the other. Before we go any further, what I like to do now is just to check the belt, make sure it's not twisted, make sure it travels around the pulley correctly and make sure it's between the flanges of each pulley. You'll also notice that as the belts come around to the back of the machine that the teeth are no longer facing out, they're facing to the front. So both teeth of the front and the back belts should be facing towards you to the front of the machine. Next thing we need to do is we need to put a plate over here to stop the belts falling out during motion. So for that we have this plate here. It also has one of the datum pickups on it as well. So we're going to mount that to the back of that. To do that we're going to use four M4 by 6mm socket cap screws and for them you will need a 3mm hex key. So we'll just place that on the bar like that and we'll insert the screws. Just do them up loosely until you've got all bolts in. Make sure they're tight. Okay, so now that we've got the belts installed, the next thing we'll do is move on and we'll tension the belts. To tighten the belts, we're going to need a 2.5 hex key and a tape measure. To start off with, we're going to loosen the bolts that are holding the motors in place. So just loosen by half a turn. You do that on both sides, on both motors. And then we're going to slide the motors back in their slots to put tension on the belts. Okay. So, it doesn't matter which side you start with, you just want to pull the motor back. Now, it might take two people to do it. I've done it a few times so I can do it without the help of an assistant. So you a matter of just pulling the motor back, putting a reasonable amount of tension onto the belt. In most cases, you'll be just pulling it back as far as it'll go, particularly on the bigger machines where the belts are longer. And when it's pulled back, just nip up a couple of the bolts to hold it in position. Now we're gonna come over and do the same on the other side. Pull it back. You can see it's a little bit tricky. And we'll just nip up a couple of bolts. Then we're going to do we'll take a measurement on both sides of the gantry and see how parallel we are with the back beam. So if we just measure, pick a point, hook onto the front of the gantry, measure to the back beam, 42. Same again on this side. 41. Okay, so we're a little bit short this side and a little bit long that side. So since that one's pulled all the way back, we just need to pull this one back a little further. Again, just loosen off the belt, the bolts. Give that a good pull back. And nip those bolts up. We'll just check that it's parallel now. 41.5. 41.5, there we go. So now that we've got it nice and parallel with the back beam, we'll go through and we'll tighten up all the bolts. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side. Four bolts on each motor. And 
and we're done. So now the uh, belts are nice and tensioned, should move nice and freely up and down like that, back and forth. There'll be a bit of tension in the, in the motors. Now that we've done that, we can actually nip up the bolts that we undid re previously uh, on the Y carriages. To do that, we'll need the 3mm hex key. So we can just go and give those a little nip up. Again, we don't need to over tighten them. And then we'll flip the machine over and do the other side as well. You notice now that the there's tension on the motors that the gantry and the X carriage don't slide about so easily. Right, so that's about installed and tightened, motors in place, essentially the frame finished. We'll next move on to installing the um, limit switches and the motor cables. Now we'll install the limit switches. There's two limit switches on Tooley, and they both go in the back corners here, one on each side. So the limit switches should arrive with their mounting bracket already on them. And this is one here, recognisable by the orange cap on the end. So we're going to install these, one on each side. To do that, we're going to need two M5 by 10 millimeter thin head cap screws. And we're also going to need two of the M5 rectangle nuts. First, we're going to install the rectangle nut with the long edge of the rectangle vertical. We're going to slide it into the T slot from the end. So, in where the motor pulley is, we need to slide it in through there. So, you'll see there's a black plastic insert in that T slot already, but there's a small gap at the end where the nut fits into. So to install it I like to hook it onto the end of the hex key and then we're just going to reach in there and carefully slide it in. Just reaching my finger around from the back. It is a little bit tricky. There we go. So it's in there and it's pretty much flush with the edge. It can't go in too far, it'll hit the black plastic strip and go no further. Now that that's in, we'll take one of the limit switches and we'll take one of the M5 flat top screws and that simply pops in the hole of the mounting bracket and then we can screw it into the nut. So we'll just put it in there loosely first, nip it up a little bit so we just want to push it against the motor bracket there, the corner bracket, as far as it will go, and then just tighten it up. And then we're going to pop across and do the same on the other side. So the same on the other side, we're going to put the rectangle bolt in with the long side vertical. Again we'll use the hex key to help guide it in. Also, sliding your finger around the back and up a little bit as well. There we go, she's in. We'll grab the second limit switch. Now it doesn't matter which limit switch you use on which end, they're both the same. So a limit switch, again with the 10mm 5M5 bolt. We're just going to push it hard up against the corner bracket and then we'll tighten it up. And we're done. Now we'll move on to connecting all the cables onto the control board. Next we'll move on to installing the cables, that's for the stepper motor cables and the limit switch cables which will run through the aluminium channel like so. 
Before we do that, we need to remove the plastic inserts that conceal the cables once all installed. To do this, we take a hex key, and we simply slip it under the plastic insert, and we lift it up. And then we can just pull it out, set that aside. Same on the other side. Lift it up, pull it out, set it down. So what we do is we want to lay the cables inside there. So we'll take the proximity cable first, and we'll just simply poke it down into the channel and run it through. Same on the other side, like so. Next we'll take a stepper motor cable. Now the stepper motor cables will vary in length depending on your size tooling. They both, both ends have a white connector on the end. Uh, one is slightly wider than the other. The wider one is designed to plug into the motor. So if we look at the size here, it matches with the size of the motor. So we're going to plug that in. The metal contact side should be facing up towards the base of the motor. So we'll plug that in like so. And we'll also run that in the aluminium channel. Same as the proximity switch. Okay, now we do the other side. Again, widest plug plugs into the motor. And the cable runs through the channel like so. Once we've got them in, we can insert the black plastic strips back in. These will cover the, hold the cables in place. So to put them in, we simply drop one end in. Now you want to leave a little bit of a gap from the corner bracket below, so we're not pinching the cables too tightly. Press down that end, and then just work your way along, snapping it into place. Just want to make sure the cables can still move freely, and they aren't jammed in any way or caught wedged between the plastic and the aluminium. Right, same on the other side. Drop in one end first, press it down, and then just work your way along. You may need to adjust the cables as you go, just to ensure they're not getting pinched. Now we'll move on to installing the control box. This is a control box here. This is what uh, controls all the motion for tooling. Um, it's basically a, an aluminium box. It's got a warning label on one side. And we need to mount this on the base of the frame. We also have holes in the top of it where the cables poke through. So what we need to do first is we need to open the box up so we can get out the internals. Now we want to remove the side that doesn't have the warning label on. So the warning label side stays here, we want to remove the other side. So to remove it, we need to remove these four screws with the smaller size hex key that was delivered with Tooley. So we'll just quickly do that, we'll remove the four hex screws. and we'll see exactly where the cables plug inside, inside the control box. Before we insert the cables, we need to loosen the T-slot nuts that will hold the control box to the frame. To do this, we just need to wind them out until they're flush with the top of the, with the, top of the bolt. So we just wind them out to the flush with the top of the bolt. So this will aid us when we stick them in. They also need to be running this way when we drop them into the aluminium frame, like so. Now we'll feed the cables through the outer holes and then we'll mount the box to the frame and we'll use this small triangle to line up with the silver line that's marked on the frame to ensure that we're centered. So first of all, we'll poke the cables through. Start with the motor cable first, followed by the sensor cable. Same on the other side. Motor cable, then the sensor cable. Once we've got those through, we just need to pull them up, make sure they're not getting caught on anything. Okay, so then we want to align the nuts so they're running in the same direction as the beam. And then we can slowly lower those down. Pulling the cables to make sure the cables aren't getting jammed on anything. Now using the hex key, the 3mm hex key, we can reach inside and find the top of the bolt that's holding the T-slot nut.
and then we can simply start to tighten it up. As we tighten it up, the T-slot nut will turn into place and lock the box to the frame. We need to ensure the little triangle lines up with the centre mark on the frame, so we know that the control box is centred. Once it's there, just make sure that the cables aren't being jammed, and then we can tighten it up. There's two bolts, two nuts. Now that we've got the control box installed, we'll move on and install the corner legs. To do this, you'll need the four corner legs, and you'll also need eight of the flat top 5mm screws and eight of the square nuts. First off, we're going to slide nuts into the corner slots. So we can see here the red plastic finishes before the end of the aluminium extrusion, and that gives us room to slide in one of the rectangle nuts. Again, we'll have the long edge of the nut vertical, and we can use the hex key to help slide that in. Slide that in as far as it can go. We'll do the same on the other side. Long edge vertical. Slide it in. Now with that in, place one of the legs in front of the thing. Now make sure the frame itself is sitting on your block of wood or your packer. And then we'll drop the leg onto the frame, onto the piece of wood as well. And then we'll pull it into the frame like so. Next we'll grab an M5. 10mm screw. Again, it might pay just to poke your hex key in the hole, make sure you center the nut, and then we can simply install from there. So, to start with, we don't want to tighten it up until we get the other side in. So, same on the other side, center the nut. Insert the screw. Right, so before we nip it up, we just want to make sure that the everything's sitting nice and firm against the timber. And then just put a bit of pressure on the corner to force it in, and then we can nip up both sides. So we'll just nip up that first. Same on the other side. And then you can go ahead and, and tighten it up. Now just go ahead and repeat the process on the other three corners. Now we've got the four legs on the corners of the frame, it's time to put on the corner top caps. To do this we'll first roll the frame over. We no longer need the blocks so we can remove those and it totally can stand on its own feet so to speak. Now there's two varieties of top caps, basically a left and a right. You can see here these are the two different types. So one of them has a cutout on the right hand side and it's up high. The other has a cutout on the left hand side and it's down low. These made up with the, the two planes of the, of the moving belts. We'll also need eight of the 10mm M5 cap screws as well. So you can see on the back left hand corner here that the belt is on the high plane. So we need to choose the corner bracket that has the, the high cutout. And to insert it we basically need to work around the belt slightly so we just drop it down and slide it around like that. And you can see the belt comfortably goes between the, the cutout there. We'll next use the M5 by 10mm thin head socket cap screws and we'll secure the, the corner bracket. 
Now these bolts are going into the holes in the steel corner brackets that we didn't use previously. And they'll hold the caps in there, just again tighten them down. And we'll move on and do the same to each corner. Now that we've got the legs and the corner caps installed, we'll move on to installing the solenoid valve. So the solenoid valve controls air to tools such as the airbrush and the dispensing system. So we'll need the solenoid valve and we'll also need two M3 by 22 cap screws. You can see on the back of the frame there's a small mounting block already mounted to the frame for which we mount the solenoid valve to. Before we mount the valve we need to remove the plastic strip from the channel in the aluminium frame. Simply do that by using the hex key again and just pull that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the cable through the aluminium channel and down through the hole. So we'll simply poke it in there first, then we can feed the cable into there and then we can line the holes up with the bracket. Next we'll take the 22mm M3 screws and we'll try and line those up with the holes on the bracket and then we can screw them in. One and two. So we can tighten the screws up with the 2.5 hex key, like so. Next we'll install the plastic strip back in to hide the wires. Simply slide in one end first, ensure that the nut inserted in there is off to the side. And ensure also that the wires aren't caught. And there we have it. Next we're going to install the overhead attachment cable. This is the cable that connects the attachment that you place onto the head here to the control system. Now the attachment um, cable assembly will arrive in two pieces. There's this part here which is the, what we call the reach arm. This is the part that reaches forward and controls the cable. And we also have the rise which is what lifts the cable arm up. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the little holding screw from the end of the rise. So we'll simply take that out. Right, now that we've got that out, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the cable through that section of the frame, the arm. And then this is going to slide over the plastic corner joint like that. And once that's in, we can then insert the, the screw, retaining screw back in. Once we've got this all done up, we can then install the arm onto the back of the tawdy frame. To mount the cable arm to the frame, we'll need an M5 by 25mm button head cap screw. This will bolt the, the cable arm into the frame using this encapsulated nut. First step, we need to insert the bolt into the cable arm maneuver the cable to one side of the bolt. Next we need to feed the cable through the hole in the top of the control box. Do that, simply pull it down and then we want to align the frame up, or the cable arm up with the nut in the frame. And we just need to make sure that the cables aren't getting pinched in any way. Next we can just tighten up the bolt into the nut. Again just checking that both the solenoid cable and the head cable are free to move. Once they're free and checked, just simply tighten up the bolt. 
cable arm is now installed. Connecting the cables is fairly straightforward. Cables on the right hand side for example go to sockets on the right hand side. Left hand cables go to left hand sockets. So it's just a matter of simply matching up the cables with the sockets. So the motors are the four pole connectors. You can see the four wires. So they go into the motor with the four pins in the socket. Now the cable plugs can only go one way into the socket. The way they're designed is to ensure that they are orientated the correct way. So we'll go ahead and plug the first cable in, which is the motor cable on the right hand side. Simply going to orientate it the right way and push it firmly into the socket. Okay, next we'll do the sensor cable from the same side. Again, we'll orientate it the right way around and we'll insert it into the socket on the PCB. Next we'll move across and do the same on the other side. Motor first. Push it firmly into the connector. And then the same again with the sensor on the left hand side. Okay, next we're left with the solenoid and the head cable. We'll plug the solenoid in first. That's a small two pin one in the center there. Again, we'll orientate it the correct way. And we'll plug that in. And then finally, we'll do the head cable. This is a 10 pin connector cable. Again, it can only be orientated one way. So we'll roll that around to it's the correct way. And then we'll plug that in. And we, there we have it, all the cables are connected. Just go forward and make sure they're all nicely firmly pushed in. And once it's all done, we can go ahead and put the cover back onto the control box. Put the cover back on. Simply just insert it like that. We use the same screws that we previously removed. And one to each corner like so. Then you will use the 2mm hex key to tighten the screws. Just nip them up nice and tight. And we're all done. Now that we've made all the connections inside the control box and we have the control box lid back on, it's time to go ahead and install the air lines. Now you would have received two air lines like so with your shipment. One of the air lines has a quick release connector on the end which is designed to plug into uh, attachments like the airbrush and the dispensing system. To install this we simply insert the non-plug end into the top in the front of the control arm, like so. Simply just feed that back through until it comes out the end of the tube and we simply pull it through like that and then this end plugs into the right angle connector on top of the solenoid like so. Just firmly push that in. There we go, that's secure like that. Now when you're not using this airline, if you're not using the airbrush or the dispenser, you simply just pull it back through like so and it just sits up there out of the way so it doesn't interfere with your cable or any other operations you're doing. Now the second air line is to supply compressed air to the solenoid valve. The end without any fitting on it simply plugs on the underside of the solenoid into the quick release fitting in there. To insert it, simply push it up until it can't push any further, nice and firm. The other end of the line has a 1 8 fitting on the end which you'll need to attach to your compressor with a uh, third party fitting um, to supply compressed air to the machine. 
Now that the airlines are installed, your toolie is fully assembled and ready to go. But before I go, I just want to quickly show you how to connect up the USB cable to the control box and also the power adapter. We'll also maybe look at installing a tool head into the tool head holder, just so you're familiar with that also. So your toolie was shipped with a USB cable. This is a standard printer type USB cable. One end of the cable, which is the square end, simply plugs into the control box like so. And the other end plugs into your computer. The other thing that we arrived with your toolie would have been the power pack. This is a 12 volt 5 amp DC power adapter. Now it doesn't ship with a power plug that suits your country code. Uh, we leave that to you to find. In fact you probably have several lying around the house. The other end of the cable gets plugged into the control box on the left hand side like so. And that's all plugged in ready to go. Now the next thing I'll show you is how to install the multi-tool head or tool head. The thing I want to show you is installing one of the tool heads into the tool head holder. To do that, just loosen one side of the retaining screws, leave the other side done up tight. This will help keep your tool head perpendicular to the surface. To insert it, simply hit it against the loosened side, roll it down, and then slide it down, making sure those are loose enough. When you get it to the correct height you want, simply tighten up the screws. Next we'll hook up the head cable. The head cable is what controls the motor and any other devices that are connected to the head. This is a 10 pin connector and you'll notice on the connector end of the cable there is a small divot in the plug itself and the connector itself which needs to align with a small lump in the socket on the tool head. This makes sure the right cables with the right wires are corrected to, directed to the right pins. So to insert it, simply orientate it the right way, push it down, and then tighten up the retaining screw. And there you have it. Your toolie is all fully assembled, ready for connecting to a computer and to the power supply, and you're ready to go. Thank you.